Hi students, welcome to today's class. I remain Mr. Doug James I think. Today we'll be discussing on the topic tangent of an acute angle. And uh, you can recall that we define certain terminologies associated to trigonometry ratio when we're dealing with uh, cosine and sine. And we also define one special angle during our you know teaching some plane shapes so today we want to look at the tangent of an angle and not just any high angle but an acute angle okay so what is expected of you here at the end of this lesson is the ability to describe a tangent of an angle is that okay all right so First, before I go to the board, uh, let me remind you of the definition of a right-angled triangle and as well as the acute angle that appears here, that is angle alpha and angle beta. Alright, so we define a right-angled triangle as that triangle in which one of its sides is 90 degrees. In which one of the sides, which is angle B, is 90 degrees. And how do we define an acute angle? We define an acute angle as that angle that is less than this 90 degrees. So you can see that alpha is the acute angle here, which is less than 90 degrees. Beta is another acute angle. Of course, that is in turn less than 90 degrees. Degrees. In other words, in other word, angle A and angle C are referred to as a complementary angles. What are, what is a complementary angle? Angles that sum up that is sum up to 90 degrees. In other words, for the fact that this and this are complementary, it therefore implies that angle alpha, that is C. And angle beta should not be greater than or equal to what? 90. Is that okay? Alright. Okay, so from the board, you can see that. Remember, I told you that the objective of this lesson is for you, the ability for you to describe you know, tangent of an acute angle. Okay, so if you look at the diagram on the board, you will find out that AB, line AB, is opposite to angle alpha is that okay line a b is opposite to angle alpha and line we are considering this angle not this very one because if you are considering this one this one a b c will remain the opposite of the right angle triangle so since we are, since we are considering angle alpha you find that a line a b is very opposite to angle alpha. In other words, line AB is called the opposite side of that right angle triangle. Okay, so you also see that line BC lies on the same base with angle alpha. In other words, line BC is the baseline. In that case, we say that line BC is called adjacent side of the right angle triangle adjacent abbreviated as A capital A D J is the adjacent side of angle alpha. Okay, now look at the longest side that is line A C. You will see that line A C is the longest side of that right angle triangle on the board, and it is called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, the longest side of a right angle triangle. It is called hypotenuse. Abbreviated thus H Y P. Why this one is called what? Opposite side of the right angle triangle. That one is the opposite side of the right angle triangle. Abbreviated as what? O P P. All right. So here we see that line. AB, which is the opposite side to this angle alpha, 
line BC, which is the adjacent side to this angle alpha, and line AC, which is the longest side of this right angle triangle, are the different lengths representing the right angled triangle. So, in trigonometry, in trigonometry, the ratio, the ratio line AB divided by line BC is called tangent. Is called tangent. In trigonometry, the ratio line AB divided by line BC, that is opposite over adjacent, is defined as what? Tangent. In short form, we say that the tangent of this angle is, we say it is tan alpha is equal to opposite, which is line AB divided by adjacent, which is line BC. Is that okay? Okay, so that is the definition of tan alpha. So you can see we've been able to describe giving a, a right angle triangle labeled as A, B, C with angle alpha and beta. We've been able to describe, you know, tangent of an acute angle. So we'll stop there for today. And when next we meet, we are going to apply using the definition of tan. Remember, the angle can be any symbol. We can use theta. We can use theta to denote angle. We can use gamma, like I've said before, to denote an angle. We can as well use xi. There's a sign called xi to represent an angle. So we are going to stop there for today. Please do well to send in your assignments. I've not seen the assignment I've been giving you. I've not seen the student total assignment. Do well to submit it either on the, you know, submit it to the platform or to my email. Stay safe. Bye for now.